Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to our Opti Race Team Info Night. Uh, Chris is going to be leading the talk tonight. Um, for those returners from Champ and Development last year, this will be a little bit of a review, um, obviously with some new info with new coaches and new dates. But it's also really important, I think, for our green and our learn to sail guys, everybody else to kind of see what we're all about and get used to what's upcoming. Um, and for Chris and Katie to kind of get everybody up to speed. So I am recording this and I will be sending it out later tonight. So for those that have missed it, you will be all caught up to speed. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Chris is going to get going. Uh, we just finished our first high school tryout practice today. So I'm still at Chesapeake. So is Chris, um, Jack, and Anna are going to be making their way over to say hello quickly as well. And Katie, I believe, is on a ship right now um, watching from her phone. He's on. Okay, so let's ask on. everyone to mute their phones and mute oh, their latte especially those that are ordering a coffee um and maybe order one and be here for us <laughs> um but mute your phones and i'm gonna let chris get going all right uh, hello so everybody um i will myself yeah, and Katie right. anything else that would be it um, as thank you thank <laughs> you as mentioned before, uh, Jack and Hannah will also be coaching. Uh, Jack will be doing our intro to race and Hannah will be working with our green fleet. So we have abundance, abundant coaches um, and hopefully we'll make, they will make an appearance as well and they can answer any questions. But I am personally very excited to be working with the Opties again. The Opties are my favorite group to coach. Um, they're always have a lot of questions and are always eager to learn. So very excited. Yeah. Because, yeah. Oh, we're also working with the high school. Um, sorry, can we just, whoever is not muted, please mute yourself. Thanks uh, so much. Uh, clicking too many things. Okay, so I'll jump right in here. PYSF is very much about building whole people. So our mission is, I'll just read it, to provide a comprehensive sailing program for all youth in the Bay Area. From learn to sail to nationally recognized travel teams, our classes stress safety and cultivate the values of character, community, and competitiveness. And our, really our goal is to instill a lifelong enjoyment of the sport of sailing and you know, the water that we use to sail on every day. Uh, I'll go to the next one just to kind of outline our character values. Be accountable, respectful, positive, and a team player. It is very important in getting ready for regattas, practicing together. You know, you are on your own boats. You are responsible for making sure that you are being safe out there that you are respectful to the other people that you're sailing around, that you're building people up, not tearing them down, you know, always helping your teammates and, you know, just being a good person, being accountable to yourself. Our community being part of a big group like this means that we are actively participating in all aspects of PY. You know, we are all working together. We all, it takes a village to make this happen. And our community is very important to us. And sailing communities in general, you will see the same people all around the bay and all the competitions that you go to, you know, and being respectful and having a good character is a good representation of yourself and PY. Competitiveness. We are very much about making you guys want to win, right? You have to work for yourself to become better. So you have to work hard every day and improve and help other people improve. Part of the great things, one of the great things about PY is that we have so many people here and we have so many boats on the water. It can seem like a miniature regatta. And really the best way to get better is to learn from the people around you. If you see someone doing something that, hey, you know, that works, you know, you can take that and build your own sailing skills. 
So our coaches, um, Molly, obviously, is our director, uh, would be myself and Katie with Champlete. Hannah will be with the green, and I forgot to put Jack in here, um, but Jack will also be working, working with our intro to race people. Private coaching is available. Uh, if you feel like, hey, I know I need a little bit extra just to get me up to that point, uh, you can contact any of our coaches and schedule a private lesson. That is done through our club spot, and the link to that can be found on the PYSF website in our drop down menu. Uh, you go up to the corner, find classes, and there should be a private coaching tab underneath that. It's fairly straightforward, just follow that process. Once you have figured out who you'd like to have coach you, contact that person, schedule with them, and we'll get on, on the water. Um, Yes, make sure you go through that club spot. So a little bit about our classes here and the pathway that we're going through. We'll focus on this top one. Um, this is our Opti pathway. So first off, starting to learn to sail. None of you in this Zoom probably will be in learn to sail. We're gonna focus right into Opti intro to race. So for that, our, we provide you a boat. Uh, just so that you can get into the swing of things. For the intro to race, you'll be sailing in cubes. Um, just as you're building more skills, you know, you're kind of continuing to learn how the boat behaves. Um, it's good to learn in a boat that's very hard to break. Uh, when you do master that cube, we can move you up to Opti Green. Uh, for Opti Green, we also can provide you boats. You're moving into a fiberglass boat, fiberglass Opti. Um, at this point, if you are really motivated, it would be a good idea to start looking at boats, potentially to own a boat. Um, but for Green, we can definitely provide you through this Can I process. pause you, Chris? So we aren't able to see this slide right here. Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, weird. Okay, hold on. Back it up. No? Interesting. There we go. Okay. Why? Okay. Making sure your phone's right. cool. up. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let's continue. Sorry about that. Uh, technology, it's crazy. Uh, so green, we provide those boats for you. We have lovely new opties that we can use for that. Uh, green is moving into a, into becoming fast. So intro to race is more focused on learning those basic skills. Opti green, you are continuing to learn those basic skills, but you're adding in fast things. You're adding in roll tax. You're adding in, you know, how to do particular starting strategies, that sort of thing. Um, once you have got that down, you're nailing your roll tax, your boat handle looks great. We can move you up to Opti Development. Opti Development is a halfway step in between Opti Champ and Opti Green. It's still learning those skills, still practicing the, the, the racing that we're really looking to get you to do, um, but it's not moving up to the point where you have to own your own boats. Um, we still provide you that boat if, if you would like to build up those skills a little bit more. And once you've moved through Opti Developments, Champ Fleet. Champ Fleet, um, you are at that level, you must have your own boats. Um, that it's just to kind of solidify your commitment to this whole process of becoming a good racer. Um, at that point, from Opti Champ, you can move into the FJ Intro 420 and we'll move on to the next bar, but we're not gonna worry about that now. Let's go through, and that did not switch. Okay, there we go. Stay warm for fall sailing. So it's gonna get cold. Today was interesting. It's quite hot today. 
uh, but this will not be the typical temperature for the rest of fall. So we're definitely getting closer into that winter season where it does start to get cold. It gets windy and the water temperature starts to drop. So there are a few things that you should definitely consider buying. Um, for your feet, if you're still sailing in you know, your old tennis shoes, I'd highly recommend buying either a neoprene sock or a wool sock or something that is synthetic. Um, cotton socks just make your, they get wet and they keep your feet cold and we don't want that. There's a lot of body heat that gets transferred out of your feet. So keeping your feet warm is very important. Uh, wearing a hat, uh, there's also a lot of heat that escapes out of the top of your head. Now we do want you wearing helmets but getting a nice thin beanie or something to put on your head underneath your helmet is going to be really useful. If you don't, you can also do one of those things that just goes around your head, just over your ears. Um, that would be a good thing as well. But again, if you're getting cold out on the water, a hat is highly recommended. A warm hat is highly recommended. Uh, rain and spray gear. So it's going to get a lot windier. It's going to get a lot splashier. The water temperature is going to drop and it's going to get colder. The wind is going to get colder. So keeping that water off of your body is going to be your best bet. Um, a wetsuit, I'll talk about a wetsuit in a second. A wetsuit is really good for when you are wet, but if you can avoid getting wet to begin with, that would be your best option. Um, so a spray jacket or a dinghy jacket, or if you haven't quite got to that point yet, just a raincoat, rain pants are really, really useful. But remember, whatever you wear, you're going to have to be able to swim in it, right? It's, uh, it's very important that you can still have full mobility in whatever you're wearing. Uh, so we'll jump into the wetsuit then. So a lot of you have been wearing shorty wetsuits for the summer and for the spring. Uh, we do recommend that you start thinking about buying a full length wetsuit. It's really going to be helpful for when you do go in the water. So like I said before, spray gear is good for keeping the water off you. But once that, once you go in the water, it can get very cold very fast. So having a wetsuit underneath is really, really useful. Uh, a three millimeter thickness wetsuit is what we recommend. It should be sufficient for the, uh, for the conditions that we're going to see. If you can't get a wetsuit, layers, layers of synthetics are very, very useful. Um, most of the time when I go sailing, I wear, you know, a synthetic underlayer, synthetic under like long underwear kind of thing, a fleece underneath that, and then a spray top on top of it. That typically those three layers work well for me. Um, but layers, layers, layers. It's also really helpful if, you know, we are at an event and it suddenly gets really warm. You know, it's very hard to take a wetsuit off in the boat if you're hot and you're baking. Uh, but layers are very easy to take off. So either or, either option is good. Wetsuit will be the gold standard for keeping you warm. Uh, but layers on top of that wetsuit or even layers underneath that wetsuit are very, very helpful. Um, on the, the subject of on land, you should be warm on land when you are rigging up. Once you get in the water, you will cool down right away. You can even jump in the water if you're overly hot. Um, but if you are already cold when you are rigging on land, you will get even colder when you go out on the water. So definitely make sure you have enough gear for the sailing conditions. We'll talk about some more specific conditions that we'll see at the coming regattas, but going to regatta and being out there and not being comfortable, it, it just makes it miserable. So being prepared for those events is very important. Being prepared for practice is very important as well. All right, optimists. So intro to race, intro to race and learn 2.0. Those are on Saturdays and our start date is on September 10th. So that's this coming Saturday, this coming Saturday. Mm -hmm. yes. um, and Jack will be coaching and Jack, is right here. This is Jack. Hello, I'm Jack. I'll be running the Learn 2.0 Intro to Race class. And like Chris said, we will be starting this Saturday from at 11 o'clock here at Chesapeake. 
and we will be using the cubes, which are a plastic version of the Opti. Yeah, cool. Thank you, Jeff. Of course. Uh, for our green team, we will be having Hannah coach that on Tuesdays, and that will be at West Point. And, and that is going to start a week from today, and I'm so excited. We have a really big class this season, probably the biggest I've ever coached, so I'm really excited to get some racing in. Thank you, Hannah. I'm also very excited to see Green Team. Uh, Green Team is, you know, that is the future of our Opti Sailors. So hopefully, you know, you get really good in green and you move up to champ and we'll get to see you pretty soon. Um, so yes, I will be coaching champ and development and Katie will also be helping with that as well. Um, I believe Katie, Katie is on the call. Katie, did you want to say something? If not, that's okay too. <laughs> um, but we will be switching off. So I will be doing Wednesdays and Katie will be doing Thursdays. Um, I will also be doing the Saturdays as well. And again, that starts this Saturday. So I hope to see you all there this weekend. I'll just check that I can see that. No, apparently not. There we go. Okay, cool. Um, so these are some of the expectations that we have for the different groups. Um, when you move to green, you have been doing a lot of practice in the intro to race. You're learning the basics of the boat. But when you move to green, you are now on a race team. Green sailors can go to regattas. So the expectation is that you need to start behaving like a competitor. So that means you're no longer, you know, just there to cruise and have fun. You're there to build your skills. So skills then race. Uh, for those people in green, we have our local regattas. Um, bays would be, we have two bays events this season. We have another one called, um, fall dinghy i'm not sure if we're going to have green people go to fall dinghy because that's a pretty big event um but we can readdress that and figure out that as uh, gets closer to the time to go um we are looking at how you do at regattas for moving you up so if you go to a base event and you are nailing that green you know then we're going to say you know what this person can probably move to development but you have to prove that you are ready to move to development before we just simply move you up. Uh, for the development team, you are now taking everything that you learned in green and stepping it up one notch. So you are learning the racing skills in green, but now you need to start executing those skills consistently in the boat. So for example, you, know, you are just learning how to do a roll tack in the green, green fleet. Um, by development, we need to see those roll tacks are consistently good. You know, you're coming out of those with speed. You know, you're, you're really advancing through those skills a little bit more. Um, you need to be able to set up your own equipment. So when you move to development team, we have a different set of sails that you use that requires you to set it up. Um, there are very specific settings and things like that, things that you can do to adjust the sail and understanding what those things are is important to be part of the development team. And then continuing to do all those basic things, the structures of racing, starting, clear error, mark roundings, finishing, executing those things with confidence and, and just, just being confident in the boats and executing the skills that we want you to see. When you, when you are in development, you can continue to race in green if you would like. Uh, we would definitely motivate, we definitely encourage you to start doing the champ fleet events, but you can race in green for as long as you would like, you know, until you feel comfortable with moving into those champ fleet things. Champ fleets. Um, Champly, you are very much responsible for your own sailing. 
our coaches are here to guide you through the process. But when you move to Champlain, you are taking more responsibility for your own. Okay, I apologize for that. Give me one second. Let me get these slides back up again. Okay. Can uh, everyone see the slide that I'm looking that I'm looking at? Maybe. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. So, where was I? Advanced boat handling, starting tactics. Um, now. When you move to Champlain, you need to start executing on strategy, making your own decisions. Uh, we would also encourage you to start doing some traveling, um, going down to Southern California, going to national events. Um, there's very there's a lot of Opti events that you can go to in Florida, on the East Coast, up and down. I believe nationals this year was up in Oregon, up at the Gorge, which is a super cool place to sail. So when you're in Champlain, Absolutely. Start going to those events and really building out your sailing uh, resume. Um, we highly encourage that and we will help you through that process if you want to go. All right. Regatta schedule, if it actually gets there. Oh, come on. There we go. Regatta schedule. Okay. So we have three regattas this season uh, for Opti's. We have the Bays number one, which is October 1st and 2nd in Santa Cruz. We have a fall dinghy in October 22, 23, and that one's gonna be at SFYC. And Bays number two in November 19 and 20, and we will be hosting that one. So I'm very excited to be able to come down and have some home field advantage. Uh, the Bays 1 and 2, those would be the ones that we definitely want to see our Green Fleet go into. They, they will have a great time. Santa Cruz is always a lot of fun. And especially if you know, we're hosting this one, it's a super easy process. We don't have to load boats or do anything or take any motorboats. It's a very, very easy event. So I would highly encourage everyone to sign up for Bays number 2. There is a link underneath Regatta Schedule up at the top. That is our sign-up genius. 
that has a there's a again there's a drop down menu on that one once you go to it it's going to say 420 pccs but um if you go to that drop down menu you can sign up for any of the events that we have this season uh just make sure you get on that list getting on that list sooner rather than later absolutely helps us out so sign up as soon as you know that you are available to go that weekend uh fall dinghy i think for right now we are just going to have our champ fleet guys go to that one that may change but definitely if you are on the champ fleet fall dinghy is a must go to it is super fun uh up at sfyc it will be a a big event um towing for Bayes one and fall dinghy we are going to have to travel and traveling to an event requires a small caravan to go especially if we have two fleets if we have a green fleet and a champ fleet that means we have to typically bring two trailers full of boats and two motorboats behind us so volunteering to get those boats up there is very very important if you have a towing hitch we would really appreciate you offering to tow um otherwise it's very difficult for us to go to the event uh for base number two if you could volunteer to help us run that event it would be very helpful uh we have two things that we kind of need we need on the water boats on the water people to help us run the races do mark sets you know record scores and that thing that sort of thing and we have on land logistic stuff. So, you know, just kind of organizing people in the parking lot, organizing food, helping with scores on land. It does, it takes a village. So we need as many people to help us as we possibly can to make this go smoothly. Cause we really want to throw a good event so that people are talking about our programs. Like, yeah, yeah those PY people, they know what they're doing. Um, so helping us out. It also, if you are on the water, that is a very good opportunity to kind of see what's going on on the race course. Cause typically, you know, all you see all these tiny little white specks on the horizon. And, you know, it's very difficult to see what your kid is actually doing when they are racing and being on a mark set or being on the race committee boat is a great way to get an up close view. So highly recommend that on the water stuff is great. Right. Champ and developments. So what can we do when there's no practice? You guys should absolutely go sailing. If you have your own boat, you should be going sailing as much as you possibly can. We have a great sheltered area for you to launch over at West Point. Um, you can very easily practice your skills in the lighter spots that are inside the marina. Or, you know, you can punch out into the channel right there and do some more heavy weather stuff. Um, wouldn't recommend going out to the bay by yourself in an Opti, uh, but there is plenty of practice and plenty of boat handling and strategy and starts. And there's all sorts of things that you can practice by yourself. So you on Champ Fleet and being on development, you know, you're very much responsible for improving yourself. Um, you can do research at home too, you know, you can, instead of watching your TikToks or your YouTubes, you could watch some sailing TikToks or YouTubes, you know, and, and continue to, you know, build your own skills and build your own passion in the sport. So safety, signal chat. If you are going to go out, you got to let us know, you know, you don't necessarily need us to be there, but we, we need to keep track of you. So if you, you decide you want to go out, let us know, say, Hey, we're going to go sailing on such and such day uh, for such and such amount of time. Cool. Awesome. We'll give you the thumbs up, but you have to check in when you come back. If you say you're going to be back at five o'clock and it is six or seven, we are going to get worried. If we don't hear about you, we're going to come rushing down and see where you are and jump in a motorboat and come save you. So stay close, stay safe and let us know when you are back in the dock so that we don't worry about you. And yeah, go sailing. That is the big takeaway from that. So if you're moving to development or champ, buying an optimist can seem a little daunting. Uh, there are 
a lot of opties that are going through and there's a lot we have a lot of boats in our program right now that are third some some are fourth generation py sailors uh, just you know passing their opties along for the most part they're in pretty good shape um i haven't seen any boats from one of our private group that i'd be like mm, no don't buy that um they are well taken care of we're very focused oh no haven't seen that one. Oh my goodness there we go there we go okay um so when you are looking at the hull you're really looking for you know signs of damage or soft spots in the hull um, if they have a cover that's usually pretty good most of the damage that happens to an opti is from the sun surprisingly um there can bings and scrapes and things like that can be repaired but sun damage is an all boat kind of thing so looking for a boat with a cover is a very good sign uh your spars black or gold colored spars we don't really want you buying silver spars the reason it is, is most of the time the silver spars are they're not coated and they can corrode quite quickly and you don't really know what's going on, on the inside of your spar um so making sure that you have that outside protectant with the paint essentially is very good highly recommend that one sales don't really matter um you do want to get a nice sail one that is not not the one that is super soft you do want it a little bit crinkly um most of our sailors mark champ league sailors don't know what i'm talking about um but, but you want to buy a sail that doesn't have a lot of wrinkles in it you know that has good shape to it, but the brand doesn't really matter. There are tons of different Opti sales out there. Uh, just find one that's a good deal that, you know, is suitable to what you need. Sales are, are weight determined. So you do have to do a little bit of research and you know, kind of plan ahead for how much the kid is growing and trying to figure out which sale would be appropriate. And that will be that will be something that, you know, th there's different thicknesses of sails and sails that are set up for different sailing conditions. But that's just something that you, you need to figure out um, based on what your kid is sailing in. Uh, blades, DSK and one or new rule blades, wood epoxy, no white blades. So we have some really nice blades that are wood coated in epoxy. You don't really want one that is solid gel coats. Like we have them that we use for our Opti cubes. You don't really want those kinds of blades. You want something where um, it is wood coated in resin rather than epoxy. Um, it will be fairly obvious when you see something like that. Uh, you just don't want it overly coated in gel coats. Um, buying a boat. New is good. Winner or McLaughlin or chartered boats. You can, you can, uh, buy, you can find those most places after they finish chartering them for big events. Um, winner, there's a little note down here, a little URL you can click to get that one and McLaughlin as well. Um, but you can absolutely buy used boats. You can buy used sales as well. You don't have to buy brand new. New boats, about 5K. Used boats can be anywhere between three and 1K. Um, and I know that we do have a couple boats that are moving through our program right now. Jumping on those and buying them cheap is the better way to go. Okay, uh, stay connected. So helping us to tow regattas, work parties, regatta hosting volunteers, mailing list, mailing list, mailing list, signal chats, signal chats. Join all of those things so you can stay in the loop. We will always be making call outs for volunteers and help at the work parties just to help build the community here at PY. There's a lot of stuff that can be done. Um, we, we do have coaches that are here, but a lot of time there's the, the to-do list gets very long. So volunteering to help us at work parties, you know, learning how to do remote repairs and uh, how to maintain the facility and all that sort of stuff is very helpful to us. So we highly recommend you help us out with that. Thank you. Um, and questions. You have any questions? 
we have some emails right here. You are more than welcome to contact Molly, myself, Katie, Hannah, and Jack, of course. Um, who, again, I forgot on my slide. I'm very sorry, Jack. Uh, but yes, feel free to contact us if you have any questions. And I believe Molly has been monitoring the chat for us. Um, if you have any questions, now is a good time to ask them. while you guys might be unmuting yourselves um i really can't stress enough so we really push you know it's all about the kids and we very quickly tell you know moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas to you know be out of sight and make sure it's all about the kids we very much believe that but we very much understand that we can't do any of this without you so the last slide about towing and helping at work parties and when we're hosting we really do need all of you to help make all this happen. Um, I know towing can be an, an intimidating thing to those that are new to our sport, um, but we are very accustomed to teaching people that know absolutely nothing about our sport to feel comfortable within a season. So we're gonna be running a couple um, like towing 101 classes. Hopefully I get a bunch of you together because we do have a lot of new people in our program. Um, but we also do lots of individual, you know, lessons or, or time. Um, for those that have never done it before, some people are comfortable after about 30 minutes of talking through and we run, you know, give you some drills, I guess you could say, you know, practice driving out on the roads. Um, and some people come and do it multiple times and, you know, it takes maybe three different days coming down and practicing before they're comfortable signing up to take a trailer to a regatta. Um, just as a reference, when we go to the Bays events, those are our big events where we have our 420s and our Opti's and every boat we have sailing, we will take anywhere from 10 to 13 trailers to an event. Um, so that's a lot. So ideally that's 26 parents, right? So somebody's towing there and a different person's towing home. So we do need a lot of people to help basically get everybody from the circus here to the circus there and back. Um, so if you're feeling nervous about it, don't worry, you're not alone. And also don't worry because we can help you learn how to do it and, and be comfortable and safe about it. I did answer a couple of like private offline questions. Um, I'm gonna be putting most, I'll send out this recording later tonight. And I also will be putting links into our Opti parents chat you have individual chats for your different practices and classes, but typically when I do a call out, I will do it to the parent chat uh, for the Opti's because that's the, the one-stop shopping. So please make sure you get yourselves onto the Opti parents chat. Um, and also I'm just gonna say that, remember that Champ in Development, you have practice this Saturday with Chris and then our green guys, you are gonna see Hannah on Tuesday and then our weekly practices and everything gets going next week. So what's new this season is our champ in development has Wednesday and Thursday practice, which is awesome. Getting you guys more time on the water. Um, hello, peers. I'm excited to see you on Tuesday. Um, and yes, yeah, so hopefully we get our champ guys on the water three days a week, which would be phenomenal. And then uh, our green guys, you guys are gonna be easing into it. And I would expect to be at our, at least at the Bays Regatta that we are hosting at home, if that's gonna be your first event for the green folks. Okay, with that, I don't know if we have any more questions. So I am going to say good night to everybody and we will see you guys soon. Thank you. Thank you, good, good night. night. Thank you, Molly, thank you, Chris. Bye. Thank you, coaches.